Ready? Yeah. All right, good evening, everyone. This is the City of Treasure Island Commission meeting for September 20th. Um, if we have anyone who is joining us remotely, um, you are welcome to participate in this evening's meeting through GoToMeeting. You can do that by joining the meeting on your computer, tablet, or smartphone at the link global.gotomeeting.com slash join slash 949-792-373. You can also dial in using your phone by calling the phone number 669-224-3412 and using the access code 949-792-373. If you're joining us on your computer or your tablet or your smartphone, you can send us a message to let us know what agenda item you would like to speak on, and we will then call on you. Or if you're joining us on the phone, you can just unmute your phone and speak up when we call for public comment. With that, if everyone could please join me in standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, everyone. Could you please take the roll call? Commissioner Todd? Here. Commissioner Doctor? Here. Commissioner Partridge? Here. Commissioner Wetzel? Here. Mayor Payne? Here. Okay, next is approval of regular and workshop agendas. Does anyone have any changes that need to be made to our agendas this evening? Okay, hearing none, they will proceed. Next is proclamations, recognitions, and certificates of appreciation. We do have one proclamation this evening. Um, it is for the 2021 Fire Prevention Week. And I will go ahead and read the proclamation and then bring it over to our fire chief. It says, whereas the City of Treasure Island Fire Department is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living in and visiting our community, and whereas fire is a serious public safety concern, both locally and nationally, and homes are the locations where people are at greatest risk from fire. And whereas home fires killed more than 2,770 people in the United States in 2019, and fire departments in the United States responded to 339,500 home fires. And whereas smoke alarms sent smoke well before you can, alerting you to danger in the event of fire in which you may have as little as two minutes to escape safely. And whereas residents and visitors who have planned and practiced a fire escape plan are more prepared and will therefore be more likely to survive a fire. And whereas the 2021 Fire Prevention Week theme, Learn the Sounds of Fire Safety, effectively serves to remind us it is important to learn the different sounds of smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. Now therefore, on behalf of the City of Treasure Island City Commission, I, Mayor Tyler Payne, do hereby proclaim October 3rd through 9th, 2021 as Fire Prevention Week, and I urge all who live, work, and play in our community to learn the sounds of fire safety for Fire Prevention Week 2021 and to support the many public safety activities and efforts of our fire and emergency services. Chief, if you'd like to comment while I bring this up to you. Sure, thanks Mayor Payne. Uh, just wanted to take a moment to say thank you for declaring or pro proclaiming the Fire Prevention Week. It's a national event that, that goes on all over the country, um, commemorating what allegedly happened last century in Chicago where Miss O'Leary's cow, they say, burnt down the barn in the whole city. So that's the start and the origin of um, 
modern fire prevention and community risk reduction. So we take that week every year and, and we really try to hit hard our fire safety message. This year nationally the message is what does your carbon monoxide and smoke alarm sound like? Um, I'd also like to introduce uh, Ms. Mercedes Nelson Palmer, our new administrative assistant for the fire department. She is also taking on the role of public educator. Um, she's already been certified as a child safety seat installer and we're working towards a life safety education certification for her. So in addition to her administrative duties, she's gonna help us get that message out to the citizens and visitors about being safe. So again, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right. Next is um, public comments for non-agenda items. Does anyone have anything this evening they would like to provide comments on? All right. Hearing none. Next is commissioner reports. All right. We'll work our way down. Commissioner Toth. Hello. Um, first things I'd like to mention are the music's in the park on October 9th for um, um, Isla Capri and all of Treasure Island. It starts at 4, ends at 7.30. Dennis Wallace is playing from 5 to 7. We'll have food trucks, um, a donation bar, some shuffleboard contests, cornball, I'm, I'm sorry, cornhole and pickleball, hopefully if the courts are done. Um, and then on October 30th is Barktoberfest. That will be at the Roselli Park Dog Park, and that's gonna be from 10 to one. And November 6th is the second annual softball game with the, um, Public Works and Police and Fire, that's at Roselli. That's gonna be from 10 a.m. to lunch around noon time. And um, I'm supposed to tell Tripp that Dominique is getting a, or Chief Bars, um, Dominique is getting a bigger trophy. <laughs> and then on October 13th, please keep the date open. We're going to have a Midway point for the library and a mini open house and also we'll have entertainment refreshments and this will be done along with the chamber and the library and we'll have some entertainment too. Commissioner Doctor. Thank you. On September 10th, uh, we uh, welcomed the, uh, the retirement, or welcome, now nah, they didn't welcome the retirement, did we? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry about that, but uh, we had the retirement party for Captain Logston, who served 23 years, and the city and, and many of the families and residents celebrate his 23 years at a luncheon that we had over at the community center. And um, it, was, it was a great time. We, uh, we really didn't want to see him go. I know that uh, Tripp's going to miss him, as will uh, the city and the fire department. Um, and this is the, uh, the, the reason, you know, loyal, uh, loyal uh, servants like, uh, like Captain Logston uh, are the reason that, uh, that we all have local support here, 100% local support for our fire department and our police department. And I uh, just wanted to say, Chief, thank you very much for everything you've done, and we appreciate it. Second of all, uh, we did have Patriots Day at the American Legion, and we did have uh, three notarized or uh, three uh, folks that joined us. County Commissioner Kathleen Peters was with us and spoke. State Representative Linda Cheney, as well as our own Mayor Tyler Payne. So thank you for for showing up. It was great. And also the last, uh, just want to the Isle of Palm Civic Association is going to be welcoming the city and the folks of Isles of Palm to the Caribbean party in the park. That will be on Saturday, October 2nd from 4.30 to 7. And that's it. All right, Vice Mayor Partridge. Sure. Uh, we will be hosting at Treasure Bay a trick or treat trail Halloween night. It's going to be on October 31st. 
starts at five o'clock. There'll be costume prizes and interactive entertainment. We will do some um, conscientious social distancing, but we will still provide goodie bags for kids and safe trick-or-treating, inflatables, food, uh, drinks, and more. So uh, hope to see you there at Treasure Bay on October 31st at five o'clock. All right, Commissioner Wetzel. Yes, good evening. Um, the only thing I have to report is that the boardwalk is currently under construction. Um, permit was approved, which we knew last weekend. Um, I went out there on Thursday or Friday and work had already started. So hopefully that will be done soon and it will be open to the public again soon. Wonderful, good news. Um, well, for me, I just want to likewise congratulate Captain Logston on his retirement and wish him very well and thank him for his many years of service to the to the Treasure Island Fire Department. He'll definitely be missed um, and it was a great great luncheon so thank you to everyone who um, coordinated that. All right next we have approval of minutes. We do have minutes from the September 7th regular meeting. Do we have a motion to approve those? Does anybody have any comments or Changes? No? Okay. Um, none? Okay. Uh, I move that we approve the September 7th, 2021 City Commission regular meeting minutes. Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Okay. Roll call, please. Commissioner Toth? Aye. Commissioner Doctor? Aye. Commissioner Partridge? Aye. Commissioner Wetzel? Aye. Mayor Payne? Hi. All right, next is our consent agenda. We have a couple things on that tonight. First is purchase authority for fiscal year 2022 insurance policy renewals. Second, execution of the American Rescue Plan Act coronavirus local fiscal recovery fund agreement. And third is resource sharing interlocal agreement between the city of Treasure Island and the city of St. Pete Beach. Do we have a motion? Sure, I'll make those. I move to approve city manager's purchase authority in the amount of 435,789 for premium payments for blind coverage for liability and workers' compensation insurance and $179,619 for premium payments to bind coverage for crime and property insurance for the it, fiscal year 2022. Excuse me, sure. uh, because they're all on this consent agenda item, if you just want to say that you move to approve the consent agenda. Oh, sure, sorry about that. No worries. So I move to improve the, uh, move to approve the consent agenda items. Second. Perfect. Any discussion? No, no. it's okay. <laughs> I appreciate your thoroughness. Kind of cut and dry. Kind of <laughs> I thought we were moving right along, but whatever. All right. Any public comment? All right. Hearing none. Roll call, please. Commissioner Partridge. Aye. Commissioner Wetzel. Aye. Commissioner Toth. Aye. Commissioner Doctor. Aye. Mayor Payne. Aye. And if I could just interrupt for one sure. minute. Michelle Gonzalez, the Parking and Transportation Director with the City of St. Pete Beach, is here, so you can match your name with the face. And so our interlocal agreement um, is going to be working with her on parking and various transportation issues that may come up. So thank you for coming and welcome. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm a pleasure. I'm looking forward to working with you guys and, um, and helping you guys do a lot of the great things we've been doing in St. Pete Beach with parking and uh, also transportation as well. Perfect. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. OK. Next, our item of business. First, we have Ordinance 2021-16, adopting a final property tax rate for fiscal year 2022. Jennifer. Ordinance number 21-16, an ordinance of the City of Treasure Island, Florida, establishing the final property tax rate for the City of Treasure Island for the fiscal year 2022, commencing October 1, 2021, and ending September 30th, 2022, providing an effective date. So good evening. This is the second reading and adoption of this ordinance will set the final millage rate for the FY22 budget. So just to recap what happened, uh, the property appraiser's office certified the taxable value on July 1st. The net change in taxable value is $120,165,272 and of that seven 
million dollars, six hundred fourteen thousand eight hundred forty-nine was due to new construction, and the rate, um, the rest of them were increased due to uh, value of existing property. Uh, increase from last year was five point six nine percent, and. The commission approved the proposed millage rate at 3.8129 in July, and the trim notices were prepared and mailed out in August, and on September 7th, the commission approved the tentative millage rate at 3.8129. The city's FY21's millage rate was 3.6129. FY22's rate was 0.2 mills higher than the prior year. The increase is to increase our committed portion of the millage rate from 0.3 to fund the capital project of the TI Causeway Bridge. 3.8129 mills will require four out of five majority votes to adopt. The rollback millage rate is 3.4301. It is the rate that would produce the same amount of ad valorem revenue as the previous year when we apply the new taxable value. 3.8129 is 11.16% higher than this rollback rate. Um, and we recommend the approval. Great, thank you. Do we have any questions for staff? Okay, um, we'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Is there any comments on the establishment of the millage rate from the public? Hearing none online, seeing none in the room, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. And um, do we have a motion? Sure. I move to approve ordinance number 21-16, establishing fiscal year 2022 final property tax rate for the city of Treasure Island, Florida at 3.8129 mills, which is greater than the rollback rate of 3.4301 mills by 11 11.16% uh, at this second and final reading and public hearing. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Um, do we have any commission discussion? Um, I just wanted to just bring up a couple, just, just kind of a recap, some of the things that we had put in the budget um, and budgeted for uh, if we are going forward um, next year or, or in this next fiscal year and find that maybe a park we budgeted for playground equipment, equipment actually isn't needed when, he thought, when we thought it was. Those are things we have discretionary um, you know, ability to pull back. So I just wanted to remind the public because I did have a lot of feedback about what we had talked about at the last meeting, so mm -hmm. I just wanted to bring it up again. Even though it's in the budget, doesn't mean we have to spend it. We may choose to change it or move it or put it off or things like that. So just for public that's following it and, and wanted me to bring that up, I wanted to remind them that this budget um, is a working budget. It doesn't mean everything we've budgeted for will be spent, but we had to do a lot for it uh, to move forward. So I wanted to make that clarification. Great. Any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, can we have the roll call please? Did, did I get oh. a second? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Commissioner, Commissioner Toth. Commissioner Partridge? Aye. Commissioner Wetzel? Aye. Commissioner Toth? Aye. Commissioner Doctor? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Thank you. So the final property tax rate for fiscal year 2022 for the city of Treasure Island is hereby established at 3.8129 mills, which is 11.16% high, 11 higher than the rolled back rate of 3.4301 mills. Okay, our next item is ordinance 2021-17, budget for fiscal year 2022, second and final reading and public hearing. Ordinance number 21-17, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Treasure Island, Florida, adopting a budget and making appropriations for the payment of the operating expenses of the City of Treasure Island, Florida for the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2022, and providing for an effective date. So this is the second reading of the FY22 budget, and this one goes with the previous item of adopting the final millage rate. Adoption of Ordinance 2021-17 um, will adopt the FY22 budget with the 
budget document and prior year carry forward as of September 30th of 2021. The total carry forward item is $3,443,268. There are 12 funds altogether and total budget proposed is $32,379,637. Of that, $17,000,000. $11,993 is for the general fund. CIP is totaling of $7.3 million for FY22, along with the five-year plan totaling of $46.2 million, which is included in the budget document. There hasn't been any changes since um, the first hearing of the budget. Uh, we held budget workshop on August 4th and 5th, and the first reading was approved on September 7th. Reconciliation items, which is um, the difference between the city manager's proposed budget to the first hearing of city commission's proposed budget that has been attached, and you can walk back to see the difference. And with that, we recommend the approval of this ordinance, and if you have any questions. Okay, any questions for Junko? Okay. I will open the um, budget public hearing. Are there any questions or comments from the public online? Hearing none, none in the room. Okay, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing then. Um, is there any discussion? You need a motion. Oh. You need a motion. Yeah, I'll entertain a motion. Sure. I move to adopt ordinance 2021-17, adopting the fiscal year 2022 budget with the budget document and prior year encumbrances as of September 30th, 2021 at this second and final reading and public hearing. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Now do we have any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, please roll call. Commissioner Partridge? Aye. Commissioner Wetzel? Aye. Commissioner Toth? Aye. Commissioner Doctor? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Okay. The ordinance is adopted, establishing a budget for the fiscal year 2022 for the city of Treasure Island, beginning of October 1st, 2021, and ending September 30th, 2022, with a final millage rate of 3.8129 mil which is 11.16% higher than the rollback rate of 3.4301 mils. <coughs> Thank you very much. Congratulations on all your hard work. All right, next is resolution 2021-16, adopt fiscal year 2022 wastewater utility rates. Good evening, Mayor and Commission. Uh, actually, the, this item and the next two items are uh, pretty cursory, and uh, I, I believe it was actually the, uh, the Commission wanted to put these on the consent agenda uh, last meeting. So uh, we have no updates uh, to the wastewater utility rates or the, or the solid waste or the stormwater utility rates um, based on what was presented um, uh, two weeks ago or 13 days ago. So uh, unless the commission has any questions, uh, staff recommends uh, approval of uh, resolution 21-16 for uh, setting wastewater utility rates for FY22. Okay, thank you. Any questions? No. no. Right here, now I'll entertain a motion, please. Sure. I move to adopt resolution number 2021-16 with the attached rate schedule setting the fiscal year 2022 wastewater utility rates. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? No. no discussion. Any public comment? Okay, hearing none, roll call, please. Commissioner Partridge? Aye. Commissioner Wetzel? Aye. Commissioner Toth? Aye. Commissioner Doctor? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Okay, next is resolution 2021 17, adopt fiscal year 2022 solid waste utility rates. Uh, just like the previous item, this two, uh, well, sorry, this, uh, the solid waste utility rates are unchanged from what they were presented as two weeks ago, and staff recommends uh, approval. Okay, thank you. Any questions? No. Right, hearing none, entertain a motion, please. Sure. I move to adopt resolution number 2021 dash. Oh, I'm sorry, hold on one second. 17. 17. Do you want to go, uh, Commissioner Toth, because mine blanked out for a second. 
<laughs> sure, no problem. I make a motion that we accept resolution 2021-17, adopt the fiscal year 2022, solid waste utility rates. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, any public comment? All right, roll call please. Commissioner Toth? Aye. Commissioner Doctor? Aye. Commissioner Partridge? Aye. Commissioner Wetzel? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Next is resolution 2021-18, adopt fiscal year 2022 stormwater utility rates. Good evening again. I promise you there's <laughs> way more work that goes into creating these documents than to getting them presented to you. But uh, this third item, uh, resolution 2021-18, uh, sets the stormwater utility rates for FY22 and again are uh, also unchanged from uh, how they were presented to uh, the Commission two weeks ago and staff recommends uh, passage. Great, thank you. Any questions? Yeah. All right, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Sure. I move to adopt resolution 2021-18 with the attached rate schedule setting the fiscal year 2022 stormwater utility rates. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, any public comment? All right, also hearing none, please take a roll call. Commissioner Partridge? Aye. Commissioner Wetzel? Aye. Commissioner Toth? Aye. Commissioner Doctor? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Next is ordinance number 2021-18, revising the sections of the code that pertain to certain services and user fees assessed by the city. Ordinance 21-18, an ordinance of the City of Treasure Island, Florida, revising sections of the code that pertain to certain services and user fees assessed by the city, amending sections of the code of ordinances to make appropriate reference to the adoption and setting of those fees in Appendix A, adopting 2-235 public records to provide for and authorize fees in Appendix A, revise section 14 dash 10 to provide for waiver of qualification fees and pass through of supervisor of election fees amending section 24 dash 23 to authorize fees for certain registration rental and membership fees for recreation services and facilities providing for severability providing for conflict providing for codification and providing for an effective date this item is the second and final reading of the changes to the code of ordinances and how it's structured so that we can adopt a fee schedule every year and it will be attached as appendix a and so it's incorporated into our code of ordinances thank you great any questions for the staff no. okay we'll open the public hearing at this second reading any public comment Okay, hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and I'll entertain a motion, please. Sure. I move to adopt ordinance number 2021-18, revising sections of the code that pertain to certain services and user fees assessed by the city at the second and final reading. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Partridge? Aye. Commissioner Wetzel? Aye. Commissioner Toth? Aye. Commissioner Doctor? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Okay. Item seven is ordinance number 2021-19, establishing the fiscal year 2022 citywide fee schedule and adopt it as appendix A to the code of ordinances. Ordinance 21-19, an ordinance of the City of Treasure Island, Florida, establishing a fee schedule and adopting Appendix A as the City of Treasure Island's fee schedule, superseding ordinances or parts thereof in conflict with herein, providing for severability, providing for conflict, providing for codification, and providing for an effective date. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, this is the uh, final action for um, our FY22 budget process. Uh, this is the ordinance that will uh, officially finally adopt the fee schedule uh, for the city this year we kind of had to do it we wanted to cover all of our bases so that's why all the resolutions we just did kind of dovetail right into these this uh, final ordinance which uh, establishes the uh, fee schedule um, again no changes to the fee schedule um, as it was presented two weeks ago um, but if the commission has any questions i would happily address them 
Okay. Any questions for Mike? All right, hearing none, um, I will open the public hearing at this second reading. Any public comment? All right, hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and I will entertain a motion. Sure. I move to adopt ordinance number 2021-19, establishing the citywide fee schedule and adopting it as Appendix A to the Code of Ordinances to be effective October 1st, 2021 at this second and final reading. Oh, is someone, if someone's speaking, it's very difficult to understand you. Is that, it sounds like Heidi. Might just need to, okay. Is it Siri? <laughs> I'll second okay. the motion. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any commission discussion? Was she joining by phone or? By phone. Okay. Heidi, if you're still listening, if you were wanting to provide comment, it was very scrambled, um, so we can't really, couldn't really hear what you were saying, and we had already closed public hearing. Um, any further discussion? Okay. <laughs> Roll call, please. Commissioner Partridge? Aye. Commissioner Wetzel? Aye. Commissioner Toth? Aye. Commissioner Doctor? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Okay. Item number seven or eight is First Amendment to the Agreement with Republic Services. Good evening once again. Um, this item before you is uh, essentially a housekeeping item uh, that we're uh, hoping to uh, get past this evening. Um, as you may know, we have recently changed hauling uh, providers for our uh, uh, residential recycling. And uh, as our old provider did not wish to uh, uh, execute the renewal in the contract and did not want to do business anymore on the island. Um, as part of the original contract, um, the hauler provided all of the residents with uh, recycling carts because the city did not have the capacity to buy all of those in that instance. So we uh, contracted that and it was built into the rates that we paid uh, to the hauler. Um, at the end of the contract, as we were trying to work out a system for them to come back and collect them, they let us know that they had no desire to come and collect their thousands of recycling carts all throughout the city and wanted them to just give them to us for us to use. They do have some value. Some of them are a little broken, and, or a lot of them are kind of broken and beat up, but a lot of them will still have, uh, still do have some life in them. Uh, but in order to make this change happen, we actually have to modify the contract and change a provision in it that, sta that stipulated that the hauler would take them back. And instead, it just has strike through language where it, they are giving the uh, carts to the city um, at the termination of the contract which is September 30th of this year. So if, if we hadn't brought this to the commission, there was no way for us to take receipt of these uh, recycling carts within this contract. So this is just a final little clear up uh, right before this contract is to expire so that we can uh, uh, receive these carts legally. Um, if, you, uh, if the commission has uh, you know, any questions about the process um, or kind of the inventory of the carts i do know that stacy and some of her uh, crews have been out there kind of evaluating the lifespan of some of them and i think we're uh, the plan is to slowly replace them over the next couple of years based on the ones that are broken and damaged and um, kind of uh, doing it as the the most cost effective way possible so we had already we had already approved or had we already approved purchase of new carts under the new contract? No, no, the new contract does not, the new contract stipulated the city would be providing our own carts. Right, so have we already initiated that purchase? We have, uh, we've begun some of it because some of the old carts that Republic is leaving us were just not functional at all, so we have had to order some. I can't remember the exact number off the top of my head, but I can get um, some, uh, you know, kind of a year to date what we've ordered. And I think that the I think it was about 330, Mike. There we go. Stacy, that was Stacy weighing in 330, which was the number I th was thinking, but didn't want to speculate out loud. So thank you, Stacy. Okay, um, so we 
were originally planning on, with this language in there, we were planning on replacing all of the carts citywide, correct? So this will present some sort of cost savings? Yes, there will be a cost savings and what we're uh, intending on doing, what was included in the uh, carry forwards list for the adopted budget was basically the balance of that 180,000 that the commission approved a few meetings ago to basically cover a full replacement. And I think that the design at this point is to carry that money forward and just have it there, not knowing exactly how and when these other carts are gonna break. So it just gives us that little bit of uh, safety so that as carts do break, we can change them out with exactly what uh, you know the city design is and built to our standards rather than the hodgepodge that uh, we're currently, uh, that's currently in our inventory. Okay, any other questions? Do you know how much was originally budgeted for that map, the purchase of all the carts citywide? I mean, we originally intended uh, that it was going to be 180,000 to replace okay. all of them. So that's what that 180,000 represented the full amount. Even though we haven't, we've only used a fraction of that amount year to date. Um, just carrying forward that amount of money into next year at least will give us, uh, you know, we'll give Stacy and her crew some time to kind of evaluate and kind of come up with a better timeline for a replacement of the carts that we have. It was a little bit last minute whenever um, they decided they were giving us these carts and we didn't have a, a full understanding of exactly the quality of them. There's a couple of different brands of carts out there and it's just, it's kind of a mismatch. And so we are hoping over time to get, get them all matched everyone for applying we do have some great great candidates um, my selections are going to be um, Jacob Ward from District 2 um, Gary Potenziano from District 3 and Tammy Vasquez from District 1 so with that any any discussion well, it kind of seems awkward to discuss now after the yeah. fact. I mean, maybe discussion should have been okay. before we made the picks, but yeah, my, I would have liked to have had a discussion before we did the picks, but I guess it's too late now. Well, my main thing with it just was, and I'm looking at now kind of revisiting and, um, you know, not, not to have too much, um, repeat people who are already on committee so um, it doesn't really look like we have that mm -mm. I just um, that was something that I in, took I into consideration as well I know Karen Barnett and Richard Harris are both on um, the planning and zoning committee yeah uh, I, I chose uh, Michelle Smith because I represent a district that has businesses and residential. And uh, over the years, uh, Michelle's been very involved. Um, and we've discussed the charter over the years several different times as different topics have come up. Um, Michelle's been very um, cognizant about what goes on in our city. Even when she's not in town, she'll write in. She's written several um, letters during different issues we've discussed to give us feedback. And I felt like she um, has been so involved over the years that she has a very good understanding of what the businesses want what residents want she's also a resident in my district but um, it, it was a hard choice I had fantastic candidates you know I think Gary and and Arthur and Karen they're all very qualified very um, applicable to the position um, but because I'd already had several discussions with Michelle over the years on charter issues and and other issues I felt like um, her understanding of where we've been where we're going and where we currently are she would be a good candidate um, for that position and I would like to um, just comment on mine on um, 
Mary Catherine Daughtry, she is one of the um, unofficial historians for this area, um, for the whole city, um, but not just Sunset Beach. So she's always, always knows what happened and kind of why we did it and how we got there. Um, and I would like to thank um, Ella Solomons for applying. I think that she would make a good alternative. She is um, very involved. She's um, an attorney who is used to, as she says, reading very um, intricate and sometimes boring legal documents. So, um, and do thank her for applying. And my same thing with Mr. Harris, I just, um, with the planning and zoning board and um, the charter review, I think it's just too much in, in one person's hands, especially with, not, uh, with us not splitting the planning and zoning board. Mm -hmm. So um, that was just my only thing with not having too much repeat and, and I'm looking forward to some new faces mm -hmm. and some new people getting involved with the city. So we'd like to thank everybody who applied and it was um, hard to make decisions on it and you know, looking at everybody because everybody does obviously have a great interest in, in the future of our city. So really want to thank everyone. Yeah, I also would like to thank everyone that did apply. Uh, I chose Mike Biondi. Uh, he and his wife are very involved uh, in the community at Isle of Palms. He's also a retired business owner. And uh, I have a big portion of the businesses on Gulf Boulevard. Um, he also has spent a lot of time volunteering for the Isle of Palms Next Door lead. And in doing that, um, after doing my research, after doing an interview, I felt that he was a a good candidate, a great candidate, and uh, once again, a, a bit of a new face. Mm -hmm. Likewise, and I'd also like to thank all of them, really, that applied, because it is a challenge to serve on a board and um, be involved, and it's grateful, I'm really grateful that we have our community stepping up and being involved, not only in the boards, but also in um, events and other items in the city. So um, let's roll forward and looking forward to seeing what our new board comes up with. Great, thank Changes. you. I likewise thank you everyone for applying and I'm very happy with all of the choices that everyone's made. I think it'll make up a really fantastic committee and um, like a couple others have said, um, I'll, I believe all three of my um, selections, I don't think any of them have ever served on a, a board at the city. So it's really great to see some new people getting involved and passionate about our city. Um, really want to engage some new new perspectives and um, I'm, I'm excited to see what, what they can come up with. So we'll, I'll entertain a motion. Just a second, please. Do you mean? I didn't write them all down per district. Do you want me to read them off? I think I had. Um, I know Dennis down. Fagan. Dennis Fagan. Yes. Number two is Mike Biondi. Three was Michelle Smith. Four, Mary Catherine Daughtry. And then Tammy Vasquez, Jacob Ward, and Gary Potenziano. Mm -hmm. Okay. I move that we approve the following members to the Charter Review Committee. If you don't mind, I'm going to go back to the notes. Um, District 1, Dennis Fagan. District 2, Mike Biondi. District 3, Michelle Smith. District 4, um, was it Mary Beth Mary, Daughtry? Mary Catherine Daughtry. Mary Catherine Daughtry. And at large was Gary Pizzonzi. Um, Jacob Ward. Sorry, I missed the other two at large. Two, Jacob Ward. Jacob Ward. And Tammy Vasquez. And Tammy Vasquez. <laughs> Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any public comment? Any further discussion? All right, roll call, please. Commissioner Partridge? Aye. Commissioner Wetzel? Aye. Commissioner Toth? Aye. Commissioner Doctor? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. All right, thank you very much. Well, that concludes our regular commission meeting. Um, let's adjourn for about five minutes, take a quick break, and we'll reconvene at 
stop sympathizing bothering me. Maybe the eye doctor will have one of these years get it right. <laughs> Did you print that yourself for the this? You mailed it to us, right? Yeah, yeah. I printed that from what the emails. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we're already on the air. <clears throat> All right. Um, good evening, everyone. We'll call our workshop for this evening, September 20th, to order at 6.54. Um, let me. All right. First thing on our agenda is city manager and city attorney report. Yes, I have one item this evening, and um, it's been placed before you um, on the dais. We did hear back from, on the interlocal agreement with the Gulf Beaches Library, and they accepted, um, or we believe that they're going to accept all of the revisions, but there was one question, um, or one languaging change that they had, um, and it's, it's flagged for you. It's on page four of five. And basically, it originally read that the municipalities um, further recommend that the library board take the following actions. And the request was that the municipalities agree that the library board should take the following actions. So that's, that's the only real languaging difference. Other than that, um, this is the agreement uh, with all of our revisions accepted. And it would, if that language is acceptable for, to you all, then it would come back before you at the next regular meeting for your consideration of approval. And the other mayors have requested that we, we adopt the interlocal agreement first, and then they will follow suit. Um, sure. Um, my question is, is also the original document. We left out a paragraph, and I'm sorry, I didn't realize this was coming. I would have brought the original document with us that discusses the original funding prior to this is into the library before it dissolves if there was a dissolution. Um, and then also the further recommend is, agree is pretty much semantics yeah. and should. That's why I don't really know I don't why see what the difference there. was, but I, they said that's the only thing they wanted to change. <laughs> so. Yeah. And yeah, that's pretty the, the similar to me. And, and the dissolution language has been added in section six of this um, agreement. That's what we had uh, previously discussed. I don't believe that the, there was mention of that in the last one. Yeah, it looks the same. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I will bring it forward to for your all con your all's consideration at the next uh, regular meeting. Okay, that was my only report. Great. And thank you all for your persistence in um, having me go back to the rest of the mayors with what you guys felt most comfortable with. So I'm glad it hopefully is now coming to fruition and a happy um, agreement for everyone. Um, I just want to say, too, that, you know, the library is a cornerstone of our community, and I really would implore you to come and see the library and make suggestions. Um, you'll see that the computers have been ordered. A lot of the stuff that is on this list that brought this all to was based because of the thought process that we could build in addition to the library, where we found out through the FEMA 50% rule and et cetera, that we weren't able to build onto it. So now that we found that out, we are already doing quite a bit. That's why we're, I invited everybody to the tentative halfway point open house on um, November 13th 
to come and see the library and look. And we, we value your input and our community's input on what's going on with the library because it is so important to our community. And also through the library, we have the lending library at the Treasure Bay. So we bring the top 10 New York Times bestsellers to Treasure Bay and people can sign out. There's multiple copies of them. So you don't necessarily have to go directly to the library. And also you can also order your books online and have them ready for you and we'll safely do a pass through where we pretty much try to do a touchless um, handoff of books. So please come to the library. Great. Anything else, Jennifer? No, that's all. Okay, city manager. I have a couple things. Um, first, we did add a volunteer page to the city website. So please check that out when you have the opportunity. It allows you to volunteer for the various things that, whether it's serving on a board or like the new um, Beautify TI uh, quarterly event that we are about to implement. So that will dovetail into me putting in another pitch for our Beautify TI volunteer day for Saturday, October 9th, um, showing up at 8.30 in the City Hall parking lot for assignments to be handed out and for everyone to be able to start around 9, um, no later than noon. Hopefully we can get finished up before then. It just depends on how many people show up. So we really appreciate um, any and all who come. We are asking to RSVP just so that we have an idea of the amount of people, but if you show up that day, you will not be turned away. So we'll definitely um, put you to work. The second thing is we're also um, partnering with the county as well as St. Pete Beach to prepare a letter in support of uh, the Army Corps to support and fund the beach renourishment project. So we are currently working on that, that joint letter so that we can send that up to the Army Corps, um, emphasizing the criticality and the need and support for the beach renourishment uh, program in general. And so I just wanted to also announce that. All right, thank you. <clears throat> okay, next up is our discussion section. And first on the agenda is the license agreement for public beach area behind the Tahitian Hotel. So Jennifer, if you could give us a little bit of background here and um, get us going, that would be great. Sure, I'm happy to, Mayor. Um, in December of 2020, Loggerhead Resort bought the Tahitian Hotel. And um, the location of the hotel and then the area that we're talking about is the beach property that is adjacent to that hotel between the hotel and the beach trail. Um, you all, as you all are familiar, in 1966, there was, a there was litigation that involved a hotel association and the city of Treasure Island in which the court determined that that area of land um, was public beach. And so um, from time to time, um, someone will come forth and, and look for a license agreement to use that public beach area. And at this time, Loggerhead has been working with city staff in um, exploring the type of improvements that they'd like to make to that license area and also reviewing um, the city's uh, license agreement. And for your consideration in the packet is the kind of call it conceptual plan that was submitted by um, the property owners as well as just a couple of examples of the types of improvements that um, they were thinking about including in the license area. And so um, at this time, the property owners are seeking the commission's direction with regard to the license area improvements and what the commission is desirous of seeing back there as well as on some of the terms of the license. Um, the property owners are not here today, but they have sent a representative. And David, are you gonna come up and speak? You'll have 10 minutes to present. Okay, thank you. Before I just you count my clock, if you don't mind, and if I can pass this out real quick. Sure. Thank you. May I approach you guys? Sure. Okay. Thank you. I do have a copy of the first David Delrahim, D E L R A H I M. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
I will. Okay. Good evening. My name is David Del Rahim uh, from the law firm Englander Fisher in St. Petersburg, Florida, and I have the privilege of speaking to you today about loggerheads improvements as well as uh, a number of other issues that are the remaining pieces of the uh, license agreement that we just need to work out. Ordinarily in this situation when there are some remaining issues of a contract, we take the two business people, throw them in a room and tell them, hey look, we got a couple remaining issues, the lawyers are getting out of this room, you guys hammer out the remaining issues and let us know when you're done. With the city, we can't really do that. So that is why I'm here today, is to discuss those remaining uh, small issues. Uh, as the city attorney mentioned, uh, we can talk about some of the city improvements, but my, my client, uh, the Tahitian Hotel, wanted to take it as a two-step process a little bit because they wanted to make sure before they spent uh, a lot of money doing this uh, design that they have a, uh, at least in principle, some the agreement for the license agreement. And then once they have in principle the license agreement, then we would smack onto the back of that agreement the exhibits, which would include that site plan, and bring it back to you today, bring it back to you. So the positive thing about today is that we're not coming to you asking you for, uh, to, lock, to sign an agreement today. We're asking for some consideration on nine different points on the contract. Um, I do have those identified here. Um, my colleague, Nicole Poot, had uh, been working with the city attorney to uh, finalize it. And although we're coming down to just nine, what we think is somewhat easy points to discuss, there was a lot of back and forth over the last couple months to get to this point. So I wanted to just kind of go um, over these items because, again, you are the business people of this group. And, um, and so we wanted to talk about that and see if we can get some uh, ideas from the Commission as to how they felt about each one of these. So uh, my goal today is to uh, uh, talk about these issues, have some question and answer if at all possible, and hopefully by the time we finish today to have an idea of whether or not you would agree or disagree or maybe have some changes to each one of these points so that your city attorney and uh, the Tahitian Hotel can come back together uh, to finalize these nine points. So I'll just go over them and then um, happy to answer any questions you have. So the first one is the concrete pad. Uh, if you go behind the Tahitian, and I have some photos of it, uh, there's a, a large concrete pad that's been in existence since the agreement that uh, the city attorney was mentioning that sits in between that, uh, the boardwalk on the back, the little sidewalk, and the Tahitian Hotel. And that's, it's currently a concrete pad. And the agreement, uh, as, as currently written, there is a question as to whether or not that concrete pad definitely needs to go away. There are some benefits of keeping uh, some or all of it, and there's also some burdens of getting rid of it. So the burden of getting rid of it is that uh, we believe there's about 12 inches of concrete that's poured back there. It would be extremely costly to do so. Um, there can be some uh, work to uh, work with that concrete pad. For instance, some of the great uses of a 12-inch concrete pad could be to bolt down um, and put strappings on some of these trailers, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, there's also some uh, uh, shuffleboard courts out there uh, that can remain and so on. So we don't want to necessarily get rid of the concrete pad. We'd like to make the concrete pad not part of the licensing agreement, but instead talk about it in the plan review, which would be at a second meeting. So what we're asking for uh, today is to just eliminate the part that says you have to get rid of the concrete pad, and let's leave that towards the site plan. The second item is the licensing fee. Uh, currently, there are two license agreements in the city of Treasure Island for these areas behind the hotels. And those two, with Sloppy Joe's and recently, uh, in the last five years, the Treasure Island Beach Resort, do not pay anything for that license agreement. Uh, both of them are selling food and beverage. Uh, they enjoy that license agreement because, just like the Tahitian, we plan on providing some bathrooms out there. We plan on providing uh, public accommodations. If you look at all the way in the back, there's a, a little proposed um, splash pad that, that they're talking about, which would be open to the public. Um, and, and so it does provide a great uh, accommodation to the public. Anyone would be welcome to come and enjoy food and beverage. So uh, while, while we would love to have zero licensing fee, if the commission would approve 
um, my client said, all right, we're even, you know, we'd be willing to pay a flat fee, like $100 a month, $1,200 a year um, to, to do that, um, and which is still more than the other two uh, hotels are paying, which is zero. Um, the next one is how are the trailers removed? So uh, as part of the uh, idea with the licensing agreement is that if there are trailers that are being put on the property, we gotta think of a way to get them off in case of a hurricane. Um, well, what the idea is is that we don't, uh, the trailers are gonna be pretty large. So getting them through uh, to the, through an area that's owned by the Titian would be almost impossible. And if the idea is to remove them in case of an emergency, uh, then I think the concern over Florida Statute 161.58, which is having beach access or, or dry, um, motor access over the beach, that would not apply because we're doing it out of public safety. Um, notwithstanding that, the idea is, is that if uh, the agreement would still say that we have to, that everyone has to abide by all the laws, which would include the, include the statute. But if we're only removing these in cases of emergency for public safety, then that statute shouldn't apply. And we could also make sure that that's in the agreement itself. The other question then that comes to, well, when do the trailers need to be removed? Uh, in terms of when the trailers need to be removed, the idea with that 12 inch concrete pad is to strap them down, except for cases which would hold them in cases of emergency, as if there were a 74 mile per hour plus uh, imminent threat within 24 hours, in which case we can undo the straps and haul these things out of the way. Um, currently, the, the language in the agreement kind of indicates, well, if there's a tropical storm or if there's a storm, and it's a little bit uh, loose as to when those trailers might need to go away, um, we want to make sure that if we're spending a significant amount of time and money to do that, that it would be done in cases of emergencies. Uh, the next one is the noise limitations. There were some noise limitations on there. Uh, the city has noise ordinances, which we uh, would um, recommend that, that we just follow the noise ordinance. Um, we're looking at doing things like uh, uh, some music back there, some acoustics, some uh, tropical band music, uh, and uh, broadcast some sporting events, uh, especially the local Tampa Bay areas, go Rays, go Tampa Bay Lightning, and go Bucks. Um, next one is the suspension for injury. Currently, it says essentially if there is any injury on the property, we're suspending the license. Well, that means that if someone trips and falls or has a loose sandal and sprains their ankle or busts their knee, uh, then there would be a suspension of the license. Um, and we don't wanna do that. What we're saying is, hey, look, if there is a significant injury, if there's a serious injury, yes, completely get it. Let's shut things down. Let's figure out what happened and let's not reopen until we figure out what happened and how to rectify it. Um, but uh, uh, so that's what we're asking for. Um, the next one is termination. Uh, the Tahitian is anticipating spending a significant amount of money. Um, what they're asking for is the same that the other two license holders have. Um, the Tahitian Hotel currently has a two-year wind-down period if the city is going to terminate the license agreement. We're asking for the same, but we're going to give a, a little kicker in there. We're saying, hey, look, give us a year for every $100,000 that we invest with a cap of those two years. That way we're not going over what the Tahitian already has. We're only asking for the same thing that they have, but it's also guaranteeing the city that we're both invested in this. So uh, if we put in 100,000, we would only be able to have a one year wind down period. If we put in a half a million or 200,000, we would have a two year wind down period to at least try to reclaim some of the improvements that we made. Uh, termination as to the property. So uh, currently the question is, well, what happens to the property that's on there? with the suggestion, the personal property that is. The suggestion is uh, if there's built-in things like the, the um, uh, splash pad, we would leave that. If there are, if there's any uh, built fixtures, we'd leave that. But for the personal property that we can remove, um, like the toilets the um, and anything on those trailers, we'd be able to remove that. We'd cap off everything and we would uh, allow that to be. Um, the, the last one is just an auto insurance thing. My client, indicated that they may even have uh, auto coverage, so that might not be an issue. But what we are suggesting is that if we don't have cars uh, and we just have the trailers, that we would ensure that we would have a million dollars of coverage for any trailers, uh, which is what the request was, was a million dollars. We'd have the, that uh, and we would have any uh, liability coverage, of course, uh, as to what the city requested. 
Um, but if we don't have any vehicles themselves that we would be exempt from the vehicle policy. But again, this, this part might not even apply. So th that's my, uh, those are the nine items. Uh, I would love to hear uh, any comments, feedback that, that you all would have. Uh, in the end, what we're really looking for again is just some um, things that you have no issue with that the city attorney and I can go back and hammer out those final details. And I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Being so punctual too. Thank you. It's almost like you rehearsed that or something. Almost. <laughs> almost. <laughs> well, thank you very much for being here. Um, I definitely was hoping to hear more about the, I think we all probably were, more of the conceptual plan. I do understand your, your thought process on how that should be um, kind of reversed, but I think it's hard for um, the commission up here to really jump into a license agreement that is licensing out our own property, public property, when we don't really have a great understanding of what actually it's going to look like. So rather than form the boundaries within which you can operate and create something and then you have free reign to do anything, I think, speaking for myself, would feel much more comfortable if I had a little bit better idea of what um, was actually being planned back there, kind of the reverse of what you're saying has come up with the direction we'd like to see it go and make sure we're okay with that and then tailor the agreement to uh, support the, the, the vision back there. Um, so can you expand upon um, a little bit? I know we have the drawing and this now the splash pad. Is there anything else that you can add on behalf of the applicants? Uh, absolutely. So the, the applicants intend on having a food and beverage uh, a place for kids to play. I know I have a three-year-old and a seven-year-old who would love to come over there and play in a splash pad. Um, the, the final conceptual drawings would be worked out so that we can wow the commission when we're seeking that final approval. So the positive thing about today is that we're not coming to you asking for final approval. Uh, I think what, what all we're asking is to say, hey, look, here's the space that's back there. Do you think that we can work something out? And if we can, let us come back and wow you with what our plans are. So, so that's why we're looking to say, that's why we're looking for this initial meeting, just to say uh, that, that we are on the same page. It's almost like going into uh, um, finding, finding the location and then figuring out what you think can work in that location. So uh, if, if the commission would be uh, so kind as to help us out to, see if, we're, if we can get past this, these initial nine small pieces, I'd love to come back and wow you with some graphics, with some architectural designs, and at that point, I'll come back and ask you guys for, all for approval. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any comments at this time? Um, I'm just gonna mimic what our mayor has said. Um, we're not really in the business of approving things without having a clear conception of what they are. That's what we have our well uh, entrusted city staff for, our city manager, our um, city attorney. They sit in meetings with us all the time. They're pretty um, uh, knowledgeable on, on where we go and what direction we have. Um, but without anything more specific, um, I would have a very hard time um, really uh, assigning a yay or a nay to something specific without saying specifically what we're looking at doing. Um, I mean, I suppose we could discuss them and give some feeling on it, but I, I'm just reiterating what our mayor's already said because I, I agree 100% with what he said. Thank you, I, I certainly appreciate that. Um, I think what, uh, if, if we can get through these, these small items, just to get a, a feeling as to whether a concrete pad is absolutely necessary or not, um, whether or not there, a license fee is necessary, and if, if it is, um, you know, can we, even though the other ones don't have one, um, is $1,200, does that work? Uh, some small things like this to see if, if we're on the same page, because if, if, we're, if the commission is saying, well, look, we're gonna want a million dollars a year for your license fee, 
well, now we just spent $100,000 on plans and to come back and, and figure out that we can't make that work. So um, these, these, all these, although these items seem small that you could just kick it over to the city attorney to work out, they're actually really important to my client to make sure that they think that, that so that they know it's feasible. For instance, on this trailer removal, if how can they figure out whether or not they can put a trailer back there if they don't if they can't get it through the city beach? Yeah. And and how big of a trailer can they put? Because um, there's only say a few feet to and and height restrictions is to get it through the the hotel. So that, that's why it's it's so important. And for music, uh, you know. Are there going to be TVs back there? Well, if they say, well, you can't have any amplified music, well, that means we can't, we can't put any TVs back there. Um, some of the other things... No, and I'll interrupt yeah. real quick, because I'm not opposed to kind of going through this list, and I really appreciate you putting it together in a very concise summary for us, because they are, I mean, they are, generally speaking, very broad topics, and I think they're probably broad topics that most of us up here may have even mixed feelings and mixed opinions on. So I think that's kind of the point of us being here in a workshop setting is for our staff to get some insight into where the commission's coming from because we're the ones that are going to approve this. Thank you. So um, I'm fine. I just don't want to get super into the weeds. When you get into the weeds, that's the stuff that you guys can iron out. So um, let's try to keep the conversation kind of broad surface level and um is that okay with is that an okay approach that's that's fine approach um you know it's it, it, it's your meeting and it's your discussion so however you want to um approach it would be just fine if you're going to go through um the items that he's identified i think the first one is the concrete pad mm -hmm. and that really goes more to what um i think uh, commissioner partridge and you mayor were talking about with regard to what are the improvements that are going to go back there? Right. Um, that with regard to the rest, I, you know, it, it is, it's up to you as to whether or not you have a sense of where you, what you want to see there, not knowing what's going to be back there. Yeah. And can you refresh my memory? Has this already went through our planning and zoning board who deals with these things all the time? No. No, it has not. Okay. No, this is something that would come to, to commission um, normally once a site plan is developed we provide how it has happened in the past is we've provided a license agreement and attached to that license agreement has been this site plans and everything for you to consider all at once I'm just gonna say in my experience on the planning and zoning board for you know I don't know over five years we've always had very specific site plans we have because um, we want to see what we're voting on what I don't want to get in the business of and I'm fine discussing it I think you know we're going to discuss it but I'm not comfortable approving something on a hypothetical and then they bring it back yeah. later and that's just my personal opinion Thank from you. being on the planning and zoning board so long um, because I've seen that not work out in the city's favor so I'd just like to offer that um, I'm, I'm fine discussing it but um, I just yeah. want to so follow up are you saying that um, if we iron these things out and get to a point where we're mutually agreeable would you at that point be able to have a site plan to go along with the final license agreement that's approved? Absolutely. That, okay. That's the, exactly the plan that we plan on taking. And uh, Commissioner Partridge, I, I fully appreciate exactly what you're saying. You want to be able to see what it is before you approve anything. And that's why today we're not even as, we're not asking for approval on anything. Uh, all, we're, all we're asking for is, are you okay if, if the agreement just doesn't talk about the concrete pad? Can we put that in the site plan? So that when we get to the nitty gritty specifics, you can say, hey, look, you, you got rid of half of the uh, concrete pad. We want this piece to be open beach or, you know, that that other piece really needs to be a concrete pad because we don't want to get rid of shuffleboards. Shuffleboards is a big part that that was in the original agreement um, with the city and, and in the order it talked about shuffle shuffleboards. So do we want to really get rid of that? And, and so the site plans are going to get that specific into it. Um, today, we just want to say, hey, look, can, can we eliminate the requirement that gets rid of the concrete pad in the, in the agreement? And can we just leave that for the site plan? Thanks. You know, I, I think that I would like to see something more than, than even conceptual. 
You know, I mean, we don't have anything that's even conceptual. You know, is this going to look like a beachy tiki hut? What's it going to even look like? What we've got is just a hand drawing that gives us not a whole lot. So if, even if we stay away from these nine, if we just talk about concept, I'm pro business. And I'd like to see, you know, this back part of the beach and behind the hotels, you know, have a winning uh, situation for everyone, you know. But uh, with this, you know, I have a hard time even wrapping my head around some of these other things, you know, when I don't even know what the concept is going to be other than they're going to serve beer and liquor. Commissioner, doctor, I fully appreciate that and understand exactly where you're coming from. You want to be able to see what this looks like before you approve anything. And, and that's the good part about kind of what we're doing today is that. Well, I think I, I want it more than that. I, I even want the concept. So conceptually, the initial thought was to have um, a tiki slash uh, piratey theme uh, to go along with, uh, obviously, the uh, pirate that's sitting right behind you on that emblem. Uh, that was the original thought. And uh, that would be presented uh, in the final form with a designer and architect to show, uh, or in the planning, uh, planning so you could have full renderings to see what it's going to look like. And at that point, we would bring it to city commission. And if the commission said, that's not really what we're looking for. We want to see some changes here. That's when we would take that feedback, bring it back to the designer, bring it back to the engineer, and see how we can make what the city wants uh, come to reality. So uh, my, the Tahitian was really concerned that if they couldn't get these uh, small pieces ironed out, that they were going to come back with uh, you know $100,000 or $50,000, whatever it is in plans, only to be thwarted by a two million dollar a year concession fee or whatever the case might be we we just don't know what it is because the, i mean the concession fee itself there was never a talk with the t to with the treasure island uh, beach resort about a concession fee and all of a sudden we're working on a a license agreement and a concession fee or a a, a license fee comes up so that's why they're so concerned to spend money doing this before we can um before they can get these small pieces worked out. I do think okay. that it's <clears throat> that it's worth it to go through some of these. I yeah. definitely understand like I you know the concrete pad is a huge part of whatever design would be there or not and it's hard to say, you know, whether we would do it, but I think that there's other things that perhaps we can discuss how we feel about because like the trailer removal situation well, should we just go through? Yeah, yeah we go through okay. them one by one. We need to see that? how we feel about yeah. that right. in general. Yeah. yeah, but I don't want to commit to anything. Yeah, right, right. And, okay. and one item, if you don't mind, about the concrete pad, I understand it, it may seem um, incidental, but in reality, if we're going to send a designer to figure out what this is going to look like, and you're saying there can't be a concrete pad, well, that changes the entire design. Right. So that's why it actually is important that we say, look, let's just not bring up the concrete pad in the license agreement itself, and instead, can you put it into the plan site? The, pl the site plan, and then if we don't like what you're doing in the site plan, we're just going to reject you anyways. Okay, so let's talk about concrete pad. My first question is, are we bound by, I mean, is that truly our decision, whether we want to have a concrete pad or not, or are there um, land development regulations that have to be followed? So, there, so the concrete pad um, can, pursuant to the litigation that occurred in 1966, the concrete pad can stay. However, if there are any other improvements that must happen, it's something that has to go before this commission. So what you have right now is a non-conforming piece of city property. It doesn't meet with the code. This is a preservation area, or the majority of it is in a zone preservation area, which means that um, there are certain restrictions on the amount of impervious area. So the question before the commission is whether or not you want this property brought into conformity before there's further development. So the answer to my question is it is your, it's our decision. Mm -hmm. But is it our decision between option, are there only two options? A, leave it as it is and not take any of it up, or B, bring it into conformity with the pervious ratios that we have on the book, or is there an in-between? Can we say we want some of the concrete taken out and not necessarily get to the conformity level? Is that? Um, <laughs> um, I will say that generally, 
the commission um, in developing property and setting the land development codes wants properties to come into compliance with the existing regulations. And so generally, um, y you, would, you would follow your code on that and have properties come into compliance before there would be further development or further intensity there. Um, like I said, with this, there is a potential to leave it because it's 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 been there and um, you know it can continue to remain. It doesn't, you know, there, there's no there's nothing out there that says you have to remove it right now. They are continued to allow it to have it to remain. But if you want further development, um, generally you bring property into compliance when you are redeveloping it. So we, we would also be required to obtain permits and obtain approval from the commission on the, on the plan site. So um, by removing it from the license agreement that you must remove it, doesn't, doesn't take away from the commission's ability to say that it still has to be there. We're just saying, can we just remove it from the license agreement that says that you have to remove it so that we can come back to you with what it might look like if we leave some or all of it? But that doesn't really give you the guidance that you're looking, that you asked us to do, um, you know, as to whether, the, as you said, the site plans would look completely different with or without concrete. Right, and, and if, if the commission says today, look, no matter what you say, we're gonna require you to remove it, you'll never see what it looks like with some of the concrete there or all of the concrete there. If you say, hey, look, we'll remove it from, we'll remove it from the agreement, but you gotta come back with something that we like, well, that at least gives us the opportunity to show you what we can do with it. It, ju it just gives us an opportunity to present it. And if we have to come back because uh, the commission wants us removed because they don't like um, what we have there, then, then we're okay with, with having our designers uh, change that. Uh, if the commission has made up its mind and says it absolutely has to be removed, yes, it would be helpful to know that now. So maybe we should talk among ourselves and see yeah. what, who's... Yeah. Who's for conforming who feels it mm -hmm. strongly right. about yeah. the concrete, or Maybe who it doesn't? Conforming or not? Mm -hmm. you want to and I think it's important to kind of frame it as, as, on a sliding scale of importance. How important is it to you? Is it a, is it a deal breaker or? Um, well, how, I'll how say I, I think that bringing it into conformity and, and getting rid of the concrete is a is a pretty big issue. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, when I talk about beach, I talk about tiki huts and everything else. The concept, it's, it's not a concrete pad. It really is having your feet in the sand. Um, and basically the concrete that would be there would be something that is going to support maybe a structure or something along those lines, but not just that it, it you know, concrete that rambles across the property. I understand. Thank you. And if I may, uh, a, a couple pieces right now, it, it says that it all has to be removed. So that means no shuffleboard courts. That means uh, tie downs. What am I gonna tie down a, uh, um, the uh, trailers to? So that's why we're suggesting and, and understand completely to have the natural uh, flow of it. Um, but to, if we can keep it, if we can eliminate it from the uh, provision that says it has to be removed, it would at least give us some opportunity to show you what we can do with it. Okay, I'm going to go Let's, next. Yeah. So I'm going to let you. Um, I think that we owe it to our future generations and our kids coming down the road that we do not leave anything that's not up to code. You have a 20% pervious surface that you're allowed to have. And I think that we have to remove and not leave concrete that's 1960s concrete out on the beach when it's a preservation area and we're looking to protect the beach. We've just spent a good bit of money um, doing dunes, removing non-native um, non plants. So I really do not feel favorable to the concrete being left as a big chunk of concrete that covers the sand. I agree. Um, I mimic everything uh, Commissioner Toth has said. Um, I've also had resident feedback who's been following this. They agree um, exactly with what Commissioner Toth said. Um, we require residents to bring their house to code when they do improvements, um, and they feel strongly that this shouldn't be different, and that's not personally my opinion. That's what residents have already reached out to me, although I do happen to agree on this case. Yeah. Um, 
<clears throat> the concrete's not a deal breaker for me. I would like to see things come into compliance, but there are other things I feel more strongly about. Um, so I'm, I'm not completely against leaving it, but my preference would be to have it come into compliance or if there's something kind of going back to what the site plans would be as to having the structures that are able to be tied down, that's certainly important. Um, so I'm, it's not firm for me either way. Or like a permanent bathroom, something like right. that, are you thinking? <clears throat> right. I'm also, um, I really like the point that Commissioner Toth made about, I mean, this is, we are investing a lot of money in making our beach more of a beach. Um, and preserving the sand and making it a really great destination and that was one of the nice things that did happen at um, Treasure Island Beach Resort was that also used to be all concrete and when they redeveloped the hotel they removed all the concrete and made it all sand now they've come back and added some concrete to support the tiki hut that they have um, behind their hotel but it's much, much less than it was before so I'd like to see I'd like to see more sand, less concrete. Um, I, but I think if we're going to do that, like Commissioner Partridge said, we kind of need to come into compliance with our own rules. And especially since it is city property, I think that's only, only fair and only justifiable to our, our constituents as to if we're allowing something to be that property to be improved and it's our property, we should play by our own rules. Right. So con consistent with, uh, I understand what everything everyone is saying, uh, is consistent with often cities, uh, the way that, that we usually see the cities um, uh, respond is the more towards compliance you can get, the better. And, uh, and Commissioner Wetzel mentioned uh, think some, some very good points, which is, well, what about, for instance, the tie downs? And Mayor Payne mentioned, well, they did put concrete back in there because they have, it makes sense you, you, for the Tiki Hut. Um, if we can take the feedback of the commission, that the commission wants the removal of the concrete, but leave it out of the license agreement that it is absolutely required, it would allow us to come back with um, a idea that might have a, uh, an idea of bringing the property more into compliance than it currently is, which is just a concrete pad uh, across 20,000 square feet and having a lot more sand available. Um, the cost of removal is estimated to be about $150,000 um, to remove all that concrete. So that, comes, that will end up coming back, and I'm gonna bring that back up when we talk about um, how long uh, is that wind up period going to be? So I just kind of want to put that in the back of your guys' head and, and leave it with um, my clients who are, are watching this right now have a good understanding what the commission is looking for. They want to see further compliance, they want to see more beach, and as little concrete as possible. Would it be possible um, for the city attorney and I to go back to leave it out of the agreement itself that it all has to be removed and to show? The commission what the site plan would look like with the minimalistic concrete for things like tie downs so that we can focus on safety of the public instead of just um, the beach well, do we even know what you're tying down uh, that would be the bathrooms um, would it would be the trailers so it'd be the bathrooms and okay so we haven't even talked about those I, I'm definitely yeah. a no on trailers well, so, hang on, let's, so yeah, let's um, I, I don't want to what I'm saying it. is I don't want to agree to the concrete for tie downs if it's involving something I don't agree with on another item sure. this is where it's very difficult when we don't have a plan to talk in piecemeal and I find that to be a slippery slope and um, yeah. I just want to keep bringing that up because I think it's so important. I don't want to agree on something and then regret that later because we didn't see the full plan, which is why when we have planning and zoning, we ask for a site plan, we review it. Um, so I'm just bringing it up again, mm -hmm. uh, tie downs for what we haven't even agreed yet. Right. And I agree with that too. I think we need a site plan before we move forward. But on the other hand, with the trailers, you're going to have to get them through public property. Hang on. Can we... Can I'm we just sorry. go down the list and finish? Oh, did I skip one? Let's, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, let's I just wrap the up. The, were next yeah, then, let's wrap up the concrete pad. So, to answer his question, I 
So, Commissioner, so you starting to answer? Uh, yeah. So, Commissioner, what may be helpful is is that there is the the property that we're discussing, the license area. There's a section of it. Um, a good portion of it that's zone preservation and then there's a section of it that has a different um, zoning and that different zoning would allow for more impervious area whereas the main part of it would be preservation and very limited so I think if your direction um, as I'm hearing you speak today is that they need to bring the property into compliance they would be able to design the property such that they could put more intensive use in that one zoning area and then have the remaining larger part in preservation knowing what that floor or I'm sorry that impervious area um, uh, limitation is and would you prefer us to have it in the license agreement yes okay thank you so right now the 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 license agreement if I'm not mistaken uh, has to get rid of all the concrete yeah can you point us to and so this might be the point at which I would consider getting into the weeds. Yeah. I, so I think that's something that we yeah. can defer to council to work out with you afterwards yeah. and explain why or why not that can't be right. um, removed or added or clarified in the license agreement. And, and David, what I just explained, if they're supportive of that, it would change the languaging to be that it would be brought into compliance with the current zoning code. Okay. Understood. Thank you. Okay, so next is the license fee. Um, how does, what are, what's everyone's thoughts on I license fee? I feel strongly about the license fee. Okay. Um, I get that the other two didn't have one and for whatever reason they don't, but I feel that $1,200 is ridiculously low. Um, I don't even know if I would approve $1,200 Per month I mean it seems like a really low amount yeah. um, if we're just talking straight amounts so that's that seems ridiculously low to me and I don't think that we can um, you know we have to look at to what we are doing for um, future generations and for the best thing for our city and I think that the um, owners of the Tahitian respectfully would probably make a lot of money from this and it's beachfront city property and I feel like it's too low so uh, can you yeah. allow the Commission to give oh, their yeah. thoughts absolutely. and then we'll come back um, I absolutely agree with Commissioner Wetzel um, and I, I don't also want to get into the business of comparing us to other properties. They pay a lot in property tax. We get money in different ways. And we've never been a, a commission or a city that bases things on what we've done in the past, just like raising children or anything else. You learn. It's different people involved. We can only deal with what we are at the present right now. So I, I don't want to keep going down the road of other properties. I don't think that's relevant. Again, I mimic what um, Commissioner Wetzel said that's a ridiculously low number I will tell you it's not like a million uh, like what you were saying in your opening you know um, presentation we're not in that business either when you average you know what we collect from other businesses the slide guy Taylor other places um, somewhere in that area you can ask our city manager for those numbers and maybe come back with something more reasonable I concur yeah, I think that we proposed, the city proposed a 5% revenue. And, uh, you know, it, it, it isn't going to be any $2 million sum because 5%, there's no way it's going to reach a $2 million sum per year. So I understand you're making that, uh, you know, a point. But um, I, I don't think that the 5% of revenue per year is, is out of bounds by any means. You're going to be able to have the property, uh, call it rent. It isn't rent. It's a license agreement. But, but uh, it's still, it, you know, it's a piece of property that's extremely valuable. And walking up and down the, uh, the trail, anytime anybody's in town and they're on the beach, they're up and down the trail from end to end. You can't, couldn't get a better location and at twelve hundred dollars, a hundred dollars a month, yeah, it, it 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 seems ridiculous. I, I echo um, Vice Mayor Partridge's comments on the um, comparing to other properties, and you kind of listed as equal treatment of its neighboring hotels. But there are a lot of other factors that need to be considered, and the one she pointed out is very very valid. The um, Treasure Island Beach Resort, when they 
before they rebuilt it, the market value, just market value was 5.8 million. And after they've done the construction, it's over $25 million. So the, the sheer tax revenue that the city enjoys because of that redevelopment is significant. So for that situation, they are, in, they are essentially paying their fair share into supporting the city and utilizing that property behind their, their hotel. So it's not apples to apples and we can't compare it that way. Um, I agree, I think $1,200 a year is very low. Um, when I met with Ray and Lisa um, very early on, actually when they just broke ground on the Tiki Hut and when this idea came to fruition, we walked down and looked at it together and Ray said this would be something that would be a great solution to what their previous plan was, which we all approved variances for, and we're all very supportive of the rooftop bar and um, pool area, which became difficult with their with the rise in construction costs and um, the variances that were needed, the parking that was needed. So when Ray and I spoke, this was a great option and he even said himself that this location having it out on the beach on the ground floor would present significant more opportunity for revenue um, so it's not that we want to penalize them for that or get our cut from it but it is like the other commissioners have said this is very valuable property um, this is we're very grateful for the work that they're doing on the actual building and enhancing it but it does it's not provide we're not getting that tax revenue like it is compared to the um, ti beach resort so i think that um there's going to be ample opportunity like commissioner doctor said to make a lot of money on this property and to pay the pay your fair share to rent that property in other words i don't think is um unreasonable I am not a fan of the percentage of revenues. I know that's a concern that the rap checks have raised of having to turn in their books. They'd have to separate it from their other business. And I don't need to get into the business of analyzing financials of a private business. Um, I think if we could kind of back into a number that if the rap checks can kind of estimate how much they would anticipate revenues being for the first couple years, back into what an equivalent of 5% would be, um, that may be a place to start. I, I'm more of a fan of a, a fixed rate though. Um, something else I've spoke to the city attorney about and the city manager was um, maybe some sort of trial period to get them up and going and rather than in um, incurring that cost immediately before they're even generating any revenues that um, that fee gets started or gets reevaluated after a year or something to that effect just so that they it's not if we set on a number now and their revenues are significantly less or significantly more than what they what we anticipated them to be we might need to um, adjust that so we could have a lower fee for the first year and then raise it up the second year or something like that. Those are my thoughts. And, and um, just to piggyback on that, um, I think you can look at some of our numbers, a beach chair rental going down a slide for kids. Um, that's going to be um, less revenue producing than the markup on alcohol. So. Um, I think we have numbers for you to start with on the low end and you can work from there. That would be my suggestion. Okay. Thank is you. That a, is that, I got, you can share the kind of sure. um, perspective of the applicant. Thank you. Um, and I understand the, uh, when looking at, at real estate and, and myself included, look at the value of real estate and what can I, what can I get for it, right? Um, what I would suggest to count, uh, to the commission is that there's a couple aspects. When you're going in to rent a property um, and you're gonna put in uh, a half a million dollar build out, you don't wanna get a one year or two year lease because you're not gonna make your money back. And the issue that we have is that this is not a lease, it's a license. 
and the license can go up in smoke in a second. If the commission doesn't like um, the way that they're looking uh, that day, uh, the new commission comes in and they have it out for the wrap checks, whatever the case may be, all of you won't be here necessarily in eight years. And in eight years, they could say they could go away. In a year, it could go away. In according to the agreement, within five days, it can go away. So, and I say that because five days plus a wind-up period of right now is in, it's, it's in the agreement is 30 days. So now they just finished their build out. Five days go by. They don't like someone, someone crossed them the wrong way. We have a new commissioner on, on here who puts everyone against the rap checks. And all of a sudden they have to get rid of everything within 30 days. And they just, and they just paid a half a million dollar build out. So that, that's the issue. So a rental agreement is, is not gonna be the same. And, and purchasing um, you know, uh, movable items, personal property, that can be taken from Treasure Island and moved over to Madeira Beach to go lease over there is gonna be different. Um, this, is, this is a pretty unique situation, more like the Billmore who's getting it for free, and more like the Tahitian who's getting it for free. They're putting in a big build out um, that's gonna cost a lot of money that's going to be open to the uh, public for access to uh, shade, to access to bathrooms, to access to, uh, if we do the, the water park, uh, where the public can utilize it almost like a public park. Is it a water park or a splash pad? Splash pad. Now I'm confused. Okay, splash pad. Splash pad. Right, but uh, if, if the, the public wants to come on and use the splash pad, just like a public park, they can. Uh, if they wanna come in and use the bathrooms, just like a public park, they can. And no one's charging for a public park. Yeah. Isn't it public property? It is, which is exactly why that, which just is- Just wanted to clarify that. Right, which is exactly why people can come on for, for free and use the, use the splash pad and use the shaded area. Um, we can't just eject people out. So uh, it, it's public improvements upon public property um, and by, by the private, it, by private people. And uh, when we get down to the parts about personal property, those areas which are which are um, like the splash pad could remain um, so that that's why I think that I understand where the Commission is coming from about um, about the cost and thinking about what what amount should be reasonable um, I kindly request uh, just the considerations that I presented which is that we're providing a public service that the that uh, we're not getting a rental agreement we're not getting a lease that's a, a multi-year lease that just in and of itself to remove if we had to remove all the concrete, it would be 150,000, plus the build out of everything. So, um, so I, I'd kindly request that consideration when thinking about the amount. I'd also kindly request the, um, the thought of a break even point, because at some point, um, oftentimes in leases, you'd see a break even point where, um, where uh, the tenant would be able to, would not pay, in, in terms of a percentage rent, just to kind of talk about that as an example, in terms of a percentage rent, oftentimes there will be a break even point every year because there's still expenses to maintain a splash pad and there's still expenses that have to be paid for electric and water and, uh, and people to monitor it and to clean and so on. So there's oftentimes a break even point that's identified in there to say, look, there's gonna, not gonna be a payment until you at least hit this amount of revenue and then afterwards, then there's some amount of money. So when we're considering what that uh, amount might be as Mayor, Mayor Payne was mentioning and we appreciate the fact that that um, the city doesn't want to be into the business of uh, examining books and records of private companies um, I just kindly request that you consider that break-even point in figuring out that number and that we don't have a, a, a lease but you make it sound as though it's a zero-sum game that that the amenities that are being added aren't improving the hotel and the folks that are staying in the hotel and having a restaurant, having liquor, having a splash pad on public property, that all benefits. That's a perfect, that's a great, great point, uh, Commissioner Doctor. And the reason why it's a great point is because it's also going to improve the real estate value. So when you're looking at the hotel as on the cap rate, when, um, when um, uh, the property appraiser, Mike Twitty is looking at well, what is this property really worth? Uh, they're going to take that into consideration. Um, they it's could. city property. 
It's it, not private property. It's, it's not the private improvement is still going to be on city property. I think he's saying so, it being adjacent to that property may come okay. into well, consideration, that, but I don't know. Well, again, yeah. I, I'm not, I, just as a commission discussion with my fellow commissioners, um, I really don't want to get in the business of making decisions on hypotheticals. Again, we're being taken down a road of hypotheticals, and that's not a good use of our time because we're not going to make decisions on hypotheticals. And while I'm speaking, I'd like to point out we've had excellent relations with our business owners, our license agreements with this commission, the commissioner before us, the commissioner before them, the co dating back 20 years. So I don't really enjoy the conversation of, you know, some of the comments that you brought up when it hasn't been in our history. We pride ourselves on integrity in our city and our good business relations. And again, I don't want to make some fear-based decisions that something could, I, I, don't, I just don't even like that line of, um, Going down hypothetical that. accusations that could ha I don't appreciate it I don't like it at all and I think that we've given you several options you know where we are where we're headed on it um, Commissioner Payne Commission or I'm sorry Mayor Payne Commissioner Partridge gave some guidance come back with some numbers to us but I understand where you're going with that argument um, but I, I think that it's just that you the feedback from us is that is way too low of an amount and you need to come to us with something better and we've made that invitation to you. And I agree with Commissioner Partridge. I think there is a certain level of trust that has to be had between these two parties upon entering into an agreement. And if, if you don't trust the city, then um, maybe it's not a, something we should go down. But there is an inherent level of trust that needs to be had in an inherent um, amount of what I was gonna um, negotiations. Yeah, negotiation, and there's also a certain level of risk that goes along with um, opening a business like this. I understand that that's a it's going to be a large investment, but um, like okay. Commissioner Partridge said, we do not have a history of reneging on license agreements like this. We have fantastic relationships with all of our beach vendors who pay almost upwards of over $20,000 a year just to ha have space on the beach to rent, like you said, portable equipment. So to have permanent improvements on property that's owned by the city, I don't think it's unreasonable to um, have a partnership that's based on trust and also mutual benefit with, from compensation and um, access to their hotel. It's going to certainly bring people in off of the trail. It's certainly going to benefit the, the hotel owner to have that property right on there by their hotel. So I think like Commissioner Par or Wetzel said, I think we've made um, our recommendation pretty clear on the license fee. Um, so let's take another swing at it. Perfect, and I appreciate that. And uh, as far as uh, any quote unquote accusations about any lack of trust, it's not about lack of trust at all. Um, just as Commissioner Parcher said, it is about uh, learning from the past and changing things in the future. So uh, whereas before, the commission said, no, no license fee. Well, now we have a license fee. So that's what I'm saying. It just, it's just that things can change. And, and the RAP checks just don't want to get part, put into a position where something has changed, whether it's outside forces or not, whatever it is, something has changed. And now the commission is looking at this differently. And so that's why I'm, I'm not, I'm not but making But there would have to be some sort of reason for, even if, like you said, you're hypothetical of someone, a rogue commissioner coming in and swaying everyone's opinion, there would have to be a basis for that. It's not going to, you have to trust your elected officials that they're gonna make an informed decision and they're not just going to, it, it's not gonna be a totally unfounded decision that a board, of five independent right. people that are elected by the population are just going to randomly decide we don't yeah. we don't like that anymore. There's going to be a reason if there if that happens that it's not being operated properly. It's a, a risk to the community. I don't know what it would be, but it's there. It's not that doesn't happen. Oh, or the concern could be that the there's going to say well we're going to increase the cost, and if you don't want to pay the cost, then you can just wrap, take it and go. And, and which is, again, the concern is not any sort of nefarious issue. It's we live and we learn. Maybe we learn that, well, the property value is way more 
valuable in, in, you know, in the future, and we want more money out of it. And it puts them in, in a precarious situation where maybe they're not making uh, the money that would have covered the cost had they known about it when they first did it. And so I, I appreciate it. I, I won't belabor the point. I just yeah. want to, thank you for I'm that. sorry, interject, because we are not negotiating the contract right. here. Yeah. The commission's right. giving you directions, so I would just really yeah, stick to the, the point of the meeting. Thank you. OK, so next is the trailer removal. So well, you can talk about trailers yep. in general if that's so. I think we can kind of consolidate the how and when on the trailer removal. Um, so concerns, questions about the trailers? Sure. I have one big question about it, bringing them in. Mm -hmm. They have to come in from somewhere to be taken off. So how are we going to address that? And, and I, I think that's the issue is I, I don't see that allowing it on the city property. I'm against allowing that on the city property. And on the, our concrete's not made for that. That's out there, the, yeah. the walkway. Um, that's my two cents. Yeah. I agree with Commissioner Toth and Commissioner Wetzel. Um, I also believe our residents would agree with that as well, given our, you know, where we've been and where we've come. So I agree with them. We wouldn't be putting any, uh, we wouldn't be hauling them in through the beach. They would be lifted up by crane. To put them in. To put them in. And what about removal in case of emergency? And, and that's exactly why we have to bring this up, is because if we're, if we're removing large trailers in the case of an emergency, that's when they would need to come through uh, the beach access point. Because lift, getting a crane uh, during a time of emergency um, is not practical. So then I would say my opinion is no on trailers. Because of that. Because issue. of that, yeah. And also, the other factor with moving trailers, if anybody's done any camping, um, suddenly the wheels don't work. And then where are we? Because you need to move it, and you, the maintenance, maybe haven't moved it in a while. And how are we going to guarantee that you're going to be able to remove it off the property? I think they're flatbed. And you're going to bring a flatbed on the beach? If they're going to have to be removed by trailer, then there'd be a semi-truck regardless. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think our walkway would handle that, and I think we just learned from driving on the beach. Yeah. I agree. So uh, is the concern with the trailers aesthetic at all? Or I, 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 I do have some concerns about that, too. function? I do yeah. have concerns about that also. Um, and with no site plan, that, again, brings up my original point. We don't even know what they would look like. I'm mm -hmm. super uncomfortable with that. But um, e even residents that have been following this from just uh, the agenda coming out, I did get an email today from a resident who's not here that was absolutely, and he's lived here a long time, decades against trailers, you know, and, and having them on the beach. We spent a lot of money on our beach path. It is our, our city property. Um, I don't believe he's alone in resident opinion, not wanting trailers along. We also spent a lot of money defending ourselves against driving on the beach. Yep. Which I know you're very familiar with. So I think we can probably move to the next issue. That's kind of. May I so respond? With, yeah. yeah, well, uh, I was going to say, I think the trailers are there because they do need to provide restrooms on the beach if they're. And TI Beach Resort has a trailer on right. their property. They're just, the difference is they're able to remove it. Right. And Right. Um, yeah, it goes right within there. their own property. So and they put landscaping, and again, without a site plan, we don't see any of right. that. But e either way, I think, uh, and this is why we look at every single property individual. I think in this particular case, it's different than TI, who has access to remove. They don't. We we're a no on that. So this is where you have to look at every property, and this is why we can't just make a blanket ruling for that type of thing. So. Uh, I, for that, I, I'm, I'm fully against going through the beach in any way, shape, or form. I'm open to seeing what they would be able to provide without going through the beach, um, because I do think that, you know, the shipping containers are a wave of the future, and there are some very creative ideas out there. So I'm not totally against that, or you know, having the restrooms with it. But it's hard to say. Right. 
what what would be acceptable without seeing it. So, and a question that I had was, can they be strapped down, like you, if you're placing them by crane and we clearly don't want them moved or removed over this beach trail, are, is there another option? Can they be, if there is a trailer there, can it be strapped down for all situations? Are there, does that exist? Is that something that is able to be done? Are there hurricane grade straps that could be accommodated with the level of concrete that you, you'll have? Um, I don't even know if that really exists. I'm not personally completely against the trailers. Like I said, there's one at TI Beach Resort. I think they're dressing it up. So if they, I mean, they gave us an example here. It doesn't look all that much different to a, just a small white building. So if it were had landscaping around it or something, I don't know that it would be horrible. And my other thought was there are a lot of, if we're worried about it, coming loose or coming up during a hurricane. I mean, there's a lot of things in our, in our, in our residential area that could pose a, a similar threat. Um, not that we shouldn't do everything we can to prevent something. And not like that, that we should happen, add to it just because we already have some. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I do agree with Commissioner Partridge that uh, the, the containers they may be the wave of the future, but they sure aren't the kind of concept I want to see on the beach. You know, I said I like a beachy concept. I like the tiki concept. With the restrooms, I don't think there's anything you can really do except to have a trailer for the restrooms. Uh, but the rest of it, I, I would like lean that. heavily towards what they've done at TI Resort with the Tiki Hut. Yeah, and the, the restrooms at TI Resort are a trailer that pulls off the beach through their parking lot, correct? Right. Yep. So it would have to come in and out through their property, like everything TI Beach has. So if we're comparing them, I think TI Beach has the standard for where we're going with the um, trailers. If we have to have a restroom trailer, it's got to fit in and out from the property. Thank you. So uh, with regards to the trailers, if I'm um, collaborating all of the ideas together I'm just trying to make sure that uh, I can we can bring it back to the rap checks to uh, have a, a good uh, plan for you all um, one of the ideas I heard was could it be strapped down entirely so that it wouldn't have to be removed in cases of emergency and um, I, when we bring the plans to the uh, to the Commission one thing that we could do is provide um, details on the engineering for that to say whether it can withstand uh, hurricane winds and so on. And so if um, there's really, as, as the mayor mentioned, there's, I guess, two real issues. One, are trailers, uh, how do we feel, are, would trailers be approved in the first place? And we're not asking for approval today, but again, just general ideas, general concepts, so we can come back with you, come back to you with final plans. If, the, if trailers would be acceptable for at least bathrooms, um, then, uh, and we can strap them down uh, to withstand the hurricane winds and be removed by crane uh, if, if necessary, if you said you need to get your property off, um, am I hearing that that would be um, permissible because uh, as, as um, Commissioner Doctor mentioned, you, you can't put a bathroom in just ground level um, like that. It, it, right. it won't work. I, I'm concerned with being able to hire a crane during a hurricane situation to move the, the, the trailer. Um, I'm and realistically, yeah. yep, sorry. I mean, realistically, if you have a hurricane evacuation, the right. first thing that's evacuated is a trailer. Because there are, I don't believe there are tie downs. I'm not a trailer expert, but um, uh, there's a reason why they're first on the evacuation list. So we we can do tie downs similar to um, just any other uh, trailer uh, in Florida. Um, there's a lot, maybe in um, Holiday, Venice, and so on. Uh, so there there are they do make them for high speed uh, hurricanes to withstand those winds. We have 12 inches of concrete block to work with. Um, that, that's really not going anywhere. So uh, if, if the commission would say yes on 
look, if you, as long as you can get rid of it, if we tell you to get rid of it, um, I got that checked. If they say, you can't bring it through the beach, um, I got that checked because we can bring it in by crane. If they say, uh, you need to make sure it can withstand hurricane winds, we can get that checked. And if I have all my boxes checked, um, I just want to make sure that we're not coming forward with a plan that's going to get rejected regardless of all those boxes being checked. That's all. Thank you. Well, I'm sorry. I, I don't think you're going to get that answer because I think what they've already told you is they're not going to say yes or no until they see a conceptual. So I think you've heard from the commission as far as what may be a, a solution that they'd be willing to consider where if you can't drag you know if you can't drive them in but you could have them there but i think there's questions as you could tell from each commissioner as far as what would this look like okay what are we really talking about okay number five is noise limitations So this says the owner is seeking limited music or sound. Um, so what are everyone's thoughts on how the noise is enforced? We have a noise ordinance. That's all we're seeking. What is in the um, so license agreement the currently? So the distinction is, is that um, in the license agreement, there's language that because this is city property, that um, there will be no amplified um, music or paging systems or anything like that unless the city manager agrees to that. And I believe that also is in um, the Treasure Island Resort and in the um, Bill Maher, uh, license as well, that when you're seeking amplified sound, it's at the city manager's discretion. So that doesn't mean that they can't have amplified sound. It's just at the city manager's discretion, and that can look however it wants or however it. Yeah, they have to get written permission in advance. But that could be on an ongoing basis for a certain type of music or mm -hmm. um, a certain nature, and then it allows the city manager to, if it starts to come out of conformance, gives the city manager the flexibility to adjust quicker than the commission can. I mean, if we give general guidance to the city manager that we're okay with, like Commissioner Toth is saying, we have a noise ordinance. So if the, as long as it complies with that, we're okay with it as a commission, we're entrusting the city manager to enforce that, then if we're giving her that directive or any future city manager that directive, um, they should be executing that. And, and with that, you could, as um, Mayor Payne said, you can have an ongoing agreement. So like say on Sunday, NFL Sundays, they want a big screen TV out there. And you could approve that, Amy, and, the, and then if there's complaints about it, then you can investigate it. Is that, that's how that Yeah, works? I mean in particular because they are next to a residential area, this allows you as a commission, a city, to entrust um, in staff in trying to be sensitive to the surrounding because sometimes the noise ordinance isn't going to just make it um, lovely to, to live next door to. So, so it's kind of a trial and error. And if they do want to have a special event, then maybe that's something that by exception can be approved. Um, and we do that for the various other um, beach hotels when they want to have something special. Mm -hmm. But on a regular day in and day out, finding that sweet spot where they can, where it's not hindering any kind of quality of life for the people that live, that live right next to the Tahitian, but also in provide some sort of entertainment for the people that are there, that's going to take some tweaking. I, I agree with that and I don't know that it's strictly a noise ordinance issue because living very close to Katiki which I understand mm -hmm. I bought there Katiki was already in existence so I'm not one to complain about that um, but in this we are having a, we have an existing condo building yes. with something that didn't exist there before and I think that our city manager and our staff are extremely reasonable in that and so I would feel more comfortable leaving it to their discretion and that they are very you know do try to find that great balance between businesses and residents so I think 
uh, I'm more comfortable leaving it in uh, that it's up at the city manager's discretion. I agree. Well, we will take it with the level of trust, as the as, uh, commission has mentioned, um, that, uh, that we have a mutual trust and respect towards each other. Um, we won't belabor that point and uh, go back with uh, the city manager to finalize that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, suspension of suspension for injury. So this says the owner seeks a compromise of suspension of 30 days or until such time the risk has been identified and reasonably eliminated in the event of injury resulting in death, substantial risk of death or dismemberment. So in this, I think death or dismemberment is a really high level, um, especially with a splash pad. It, not that if somebody, I mean, there's a, you know, example in there if somebody tripped over their own broken sandal. I, I get that, but that's not what's going to happen. But I am concerned if there's, you know, some sort of repeated issue, especially if there's a splash pad that maybe um, that the city should have the ability to go in and say, okay, there needs to be new whatever non-slip surfaces or whatever it would be on there if there's consistent complaints. You know, if the, if the fire chief comes and says, hey, you know, somebody's falling off a bar stool every day, not because they're drunk, but they have shoddy furniture, you know, whatever the case may be, I don't think it needs to rise to the level of death or dismemberment. I, I agree. Concur. Yeah. Concur. Thank you. We're, we're just trying to uh, get some sort of compromise somewhere in the middle because uh, as it was currently written, it was any injury that occurs. So um, we're just looking for something in between. We, I appreciate the commission giving some thought and insight as to that, uh, what that might look like as repeated injuries or um, uh, identifying a, a condition that might exist, which which would pose a risk, um, which was identified and, and later, uh, and, and how we can rectify that, and not just, well, a skin knee means you have to shut down. Well, again, I'm going to deflect back to a previous comment I'd made. We don't have that reputation. I fully entrust the discretion of our city city manager, our city staff, um, and again, I wouldn't want to pigeonhole us into some sort of language that doesn't allow us to address something that we're unforeseen right now but could be dire. Um, I'm completely comfortable with leaving that in our city manager's discretion. I see no need to change that at all. And Commission, if I may, um, just so that we're clear, there was, there's no uh, mandatory suspension. So what happens is it's, it's just that the license is subject to suspension um, in the city's discretion if there was um, an injury or an accident that occurs. And that same language is in all of our concessionaire agreements. It is not in the Treasure Island or the Bilmar, but it is in all of our recent concessionaire agreements. I, I do think that's important. I mean, we trust our, and trust our city manager, our fire chief, our police chief, and if they come and, and maybe, you know, it, 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 they're not going to come to the city manager if somebody's tripping over their own sandal or they do something stupid, but if there's something inherent in the property that you know, it appears that it could be a fix and we don't want more injuries. I think it's incumbent, especially since it's on city property, for us to be vigilant about that. Very good, thank you. Okay, anything else to add on that one? Okay, seven is termination time. So owner seeks termination based upon cause or no cause separately. Um, the other licenses have a two-year wind-down period. So let's talk about the wind-down period and termination period. Any thoughts? They have in here city seeks removal within 30 days by owner. Is that is that an, is that accurate? On the the last. Um, the last sentence of the number seven summarizing on the says city seeks removal within 30 days by owner. So what was originally proposed um, was that the the termination notice would be um, so they would give, be given a 30 day termination notice and then they would have 90 days in which to remove all of the improvements at the city's discretion. The city could um, go ahead and say that those 
improvements needed to stay if they wanted them to stay. Um, however, they also, and they would remove all their personal property at that time, and they would, um, you know, they would give them time to if they needed to make additional um, alterations to their upland property to accommodate the change. Um, but no, the, and I believe that the improvements had to be removed within that 90 day period. Okay, so 30 days, 30 days to, the, they don't have to remove everything they put on within 30 days. No, it was within the 90 day period. Within. That's what that 90 days was for. Okay. And I apologize, Commission, if there was any confusion. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, Nicole Poot, along with uh, City Council, worked out some red lines. And so I'm looking through the red lines, trying to figure out what was agreed upon, what was not agreed upon. Um, so certainly appreciate 90 days additional to, to take it down. Um, the biggest issue is uh, you could tell from, from the whole tone of the, of the presentation is what about the cost versus uh, uh, recovering that cost? And, and I understand and appreciate the commission's uh, response and, and we take that very seriously that there's a level of trust, number one, that the city isn't looking to just boot people off and we sincerely I know my clients are listening right now and appreciate that sentiment from everyone especially uh, vice chair or vice vice mayor um, and so uh, what what they're looking at it though is two different areas so for cause to say hey look uh, you guys are not being in compliant with this you got here's your 30-day notice after the 30 days you got to get your stuff off here's your 90 days to get your stuff off um, versus that wind down period if uh, the city commission uh, changes its mind for whatever reason um, and again I understand the level of trust uh, there, there's still that that two that right a little bit of a little bit of um, sleeping easy at night knowing that they could at least recover some of that uh, expenditure um, that the that the city will um, will have for going But I think, isn't it somewhat, and correct me if I'm wrong, but if it's a, there's options that if there's something that needs to be fixed to shut it down and, and fix it, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Well, just like what we were talking about with regard to injury and accident, we might suspend the activities so that a repair, a necessary repair could be made. Right. Um, yes. So we were seeking, um, and clearly it's going to be over two hundred thousand dollars. So effectively, we were looking at the same. We were requesting the same wind down period that the Billmar has, which is that two years, um, which would allow us to recover uh, that amount. Uh, very candidly, the the part of it would also be if the city says, "Well, look, we think that we need to change the amount of the compensation." Um, the city can say, "All right, well, look, here's what we're going to do. We're going to terminate this now." And in, in the next two years, we got to renegotiate a new rate. And, and that's what this would allow us to do, is to say at least we get two years at that rate um, before we have to go renegotiate something as well. It gives you that, that added security. And I would just say to the commission that if there's a concern regarding the rate and the time period in which it's locked into, that can be something that would be negotiated through terms. And this is the kind of minutia I really wouldn't um, you know, advise that you get involved in, but I mean, we can say the license will be for this term and will expire. And so, if everybody is operating, you know, happy, healthy, and going forward, then the rate could be locked in for a year or two before there was an increase. I wouldn't use a termination clause to address a rate issue. Well, I don't think I. I mean, in, in, in kind of going back to, I don't see us jumping from, you know, a. $25,000 a year lease to a million dollar a year lease. You know, I just don't think that's something that's realistically going to happen, but I feel like those type of terms can be built more into the, the licensing fees rather it, than the termination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we are all so confident that a future commission isn't going to take some sort of rash decision I guess I I'm not completely opposed opposed to this approach because if we're that confident that that's not going to happen then 
why not list some reasons that it can be terminated for cause and then if it's not for cause even if we don't think that's ever going to happen at least it gives them the peace of mind that that's not going to happen and they have a little bit longer to if that for some reason did happen they have a little bit longer to wind things down I'm not you, you mean put that. like putting into the not for cause as a fee agreement dispute or something like I don't know what the out. situation would be but if it's not for cause that's just there's no reason at all and so if the commission has decided we don't want it there anymore then they have a year or two years to finish it up because at that point it's not justified unless it's unless they're doing something wrong yeah well I, I kind of like the Bill Moore's um, the lease withdrawal and the way they have it set up and then the one with the Treasure Island Beach Resort maybe we could find a compromise between the two to give a termination clause on that um, one calls for 90 days and the other one is a, a two-year wind down which is way too long if there's a problem um, so I think somewhere maybe we could direct our city attorney to come up with a medium point um, a midway somehow when I know we also have to look at the um, yeah. I know we're comparing like the TI Beach Resort and the Bill Maher, but they also, their agreements are a little difficult to understand and have to be paired with the resolutions that were passed along with it. So I know one of them, I don't know why yeah. I'm getting weird feedback. Um, is there anything you needed to I, I add to gonna, that respect? I was just going to say that obviously, you know, the agreement can be drafted um, in many different ways, but historically the way that the city has drafted all of its license agreements is it has a termination provision and that's it. It doesn't identify with or without cause. As a matter of fact, specifically in the resolutions that approved both the Bill Maher and the Treasure Island Resort, um, the commission said that it could unilaterally terminate with or without cause and part of that was because they were holding on to the fact that this is a this is a license not a lease this is public property and that if they were actually getting to the point where it was going to require termination they there would likely be um, a rationale for it for the commission to take such action and so they would want that to um, resolve I guess more quickly so I just will tell you that, not to say that it can't be drafted a different way, but to let you know that historically that's not how the city commission has done any of its licenses. I do have a concern, like let's kind of go into the issue that with the improvements that, that they're potentially seeking with a bathroom trailer, say, um, that I, I see a bathroom trailer as a potential problem as a you know point of disagreement or point of contention that could come you know that we say look it needs to be in better shape and they say it is in better shape you know mm -hmm. so uh, and that may not necessarily violate any sort of cause that we could list in an agreement right so right. that's it yeah not that they wouldn't have their property up to speed it's just you know I'm just thinking with that I, I That's if I'm not, oh, I think, are, are we all out? <laughs> We're back. <laughs> if, I, if I may, I think there's, there's two parts to it. One is um, the, the TI uh, Beach Resort has that wind down period and they have a single termination. So if, if, that, if I'm putting two and two together, whether you're for cause or not for cause, they're still getting that two-year wind-down period then. Is that uh, correct, city attorney? The, there's the two-year wind-down period, but, what, but there's not operation during that time period. And I think that that was part of the question when, when we were reading, uh, the Tahitian was reading the uh, Treasure Islands uh, Beach Resorts Agreement as to whether or not there actually is uh, ability to operate during that time, um, during those two years. 
So, so that's what I was referring to. You have to pair it with the resolution that was passed along with the ordinance where the commission really makes themselves very clear that that two-year time period is not a time to continue operating, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's in that resolution where they identify that it can be unilaterally unilaterally terminated any time with or without cause. Yes. And that's in both resolutions for both license agreements. Yes. So and we're obviously trying to get that set up a little bit more clarified because I don't like that it's a two-part agreement with the resolution and the license agreement. I think we all agree it right. needs we to be agree. very clear-cut so we're not in this position again in the future trying to decipher what a past commission really meant when they signed this license agreement and accompanied it with a, a resolution. So we want to just make sure that what we intend is in this agreement. A absolutely. And um, I think that uh, you but a two year line down period when you're not operating doesn't really make much sense. Yeah. No. So if that's what our interpretation of the agreement with the resolution is a two year wind down period where you're not operating, what's the point of that? Yeah. We don't want something sitting on the beach for two years after not operating and being just yeah. sitting there. We need to- Liability on city property, yeah. we wouldn't enter into that. Sure, um, and, and I think that what we were aiming at, um, because this the for cause was not in the agreement, uh, what we were aiming for was that midway point to say, look, if, if we're not doing something up to snuff, if we're not, if you're not maintaining a trailer, if the trailer is not maintained, that means it's not up to city code, right? If, uh, if we could put something in in the agreement that talks about deplorable conditions or unsightly conditions or something to that effect um, to make it within cause, you have a, a brilliant attorney on staff, which is great, who is a wordsmith um, by all stretch. And I think that uh, we could we could put something together that would allow a for cause that could make the commission feel comfortable um, that would get rid of of the um, of, of uh, the the license uh, if there was cause that existed, but also allow the them to sleep at night if there's no cause for whatever that reason might be um, to to let them uh, try to recoup some of their their expenditure. You see, I think that it, it's but the point's been made already that this is not a lease. This is a license. It's permission from the city to operate on public property. And that's exactly the way it needs to stay. And, and personally, I think that now we're, we're getting into a lot of minutia yeah. that right now, at least it's me as a commissioner, I don't want to be involved in. I leave that for legal and for administration. I think we have enough direction to go on. Okay. Thank you. And we can bypass the auto insurance. My clients indicated that uh, we can get over that. So that way we'll, we'll fix that with the city directly, with the city staff, if that's okay with the commission. Okay. The prop termination property, are we good on that one as well? Uh, the, the personal Number property. Eight. Yeah, the, the personal property. Um, I, I think I ended up speaking with Jennifer just before this meeting. I think we were kind of working some things out in that sense. Um, I don't know if the city would want uh, trailers left on their property if or the other no. personal property. No, it was never the intention for the cities to have personal property. It was only if there were permanent improvements that those would be removed at the city's discretion. Yeah. So I, I think that that would hopefully be addressed directly with staff. Okay. Um, in closing, I know Commissioner Doctor has kind of given his ideas of what he would anticipate this looking like and like I said at the beginning that was really my hope coming into this was that we were going to have the applicants sharing their vision I know they already kind of have a, to a certain extent and gave us that drawing um, but kind of flipping that is there anything now that we're discussing this that other commissioners would like to share with the applicant of certain things they would hope not to see or hope to see that are per sticking points for you. I know um, someone mentioned the shipping containers they're not a fan of. Anything else like that that you'd like them to steer away from or a certain theme that you'd like to see or general general guidance as they embark on tweaking this a little bit more? Oh, I'm going to echo Commissioner Partridge and say that they need to present their ideas to us. 
I, I do like the idea of a splash pad or anything that they can add to our beach area that we don't currently have. I think that's always something embraced by the residents. I think it would serve them well because it would give them uh, revenue from the residents. Um, I do think it's a great property. I think that it could be very profitable for them if it's done tastefully. And um, I think we have a great city staff to work with. I, I'm not sure what created the reluctancy or the point that we're at, but um, I would like to see us get it developed and work together. And um, I think that's the intent of all of us. Again, uh, as we had said before, we do represent our um, residents. We are very close to our residents. We know what they want and they don't want, which was reflected in our feedback given uh, to you today. But I think um, it's the general consensus. We, we do embrace development. We want development. We want um, new amenities on our beach. We're, we're all in favor of that. Um, but again, we want responsible development with license agreements that make sense to us, that protect our city property, um, so we don't have problems going forward. So I appreciated the conversation. I think we were very candid with our comments, and I think if we have anything more, we'll speak to our city manager and our city attorney, and they can funnel them to you. Well, I'd like to thank all of the city commission, Mayor Payne, um, city staff, city council, or I'm sorry, uh, city attorney, city clerk, and, and city manager for your time today. Your feedback has been extremely helpful. Um, I know it's been a little bit of an exhaustive day um, and it's late at night. So uh, again, I, I just wanna send my appreciation to all of you um, and, and we hope to come back and wow you. I'll leave it with that. <laughs> hope so. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, um, next item on our agenda is financial report, third quarter. Great little nightcap. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be really fast, and this is the uh, financial highlights for the third quarter as of June 30th. So we have eight governmental funds, including our general fund. Uh, there's seven others are special revenue funds, such as um, Penny for Pinellas and county gas tax and building funds. And in addition, we have three enterprise funds. These are for our business type activities. They are wastewater, solid waste, and stormwater funds. So um, we collect fees for those services from customers, and those fees are to cover the operating costs of these funds. So for general fund revenue overall is at 84% as of the end of this quarter. Some revenues are collected at the front of the, you know, the beginning of the year and some are spread out more evenly. So it is pretty typical. And out of all of these funds, only intergovernmental fund is below the target. It's because um, I have talked about this before, but it's due to two large FDOT grants uh, that are budgeted here, but we haven't gotten to the point where we can request for reimbursement. And those projects are going to be carried forward to uh, next fiscal year. And I would also like to point out that we collected 179,000 for CARES related uh, federal grants this year, and those things are not budgeted, so that is a good thing. And expenditures overall for general fund, they are on target. And as for other governmental funds, uh, penny and county gas tax, they are always um, behind a couple of months in collection because they go through the state and then go come down to the county and then comes to us. So as of this report date, we um, the revenues reflect uh, the revenues from October through May. So it's one month behind, but it's still on target. And um, building funds, building permit revenues are above target for this year, and it's a little more than last year. Um, as you remember, we reduced our permit fees by 33% in FI20 to meet the legal limit of funds that we can carry forward, and we, we, we will meet that target, so it's, you know, we won't be carrying the excess fund balance for building fund. And projects that will not be completed this fiscal year will be carried forward to the next year, as you saw it in the carry forward list earlier tonight. And now for our investment, in general, we keep around $1 million at all times in our checking fund. Uh, checking account, checking account does not um, accrue any interest, and the rest of the amount we try to invest in either CDs or money market. And during the third quarter, we had three CDs that matured and one security that matured during that 
last quarter, and it was total of 3.75 million, and we reinvested them in variable uh, net asset value rather than purchasing any more CDs or uh, security because interest rate was so low. And while variable NAV is a little less flexible compared to a money market, it's still a lot more flexible than CDs. And as we see better interest rate comes along, we would be able to take the money out and reinvest in some you know, CDs or securities or term series or something like that. So we keep on monitoring and we want to um, diversify those uh, our portfolio. And if there's any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Any questions? Oh, very thorough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank you. Thorough yet easy to understand. Yes. Well appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any old business? I don't think so. Any public comment? All right, hearing none. That will go ahead and adjourn our meeting. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>